Hi, I'm Fred. How's that? How's that? Approaching it as another project in my life. It's just going to be the last project in this life. Will the progression of the disease in my arms make my arms completely useless at some point? You know, when I am out in the world and I engage with other people, you know, other people who know I have ALS, other people who know I have a feeding tube now. I think they look into my soul and they see me and they really don't see. They really don't see or don't want to see the physical and emotional struggles that I go through all the time. It started in the arms, um, and that's where it's going to be most profoundly affected. Um, and it, there will reach a point where there's no, no function in the arms. When we left here a month ago, I said to everyone, that may be the last time coming up here. So it feels nice to be back. It's pretty simple, I'm about movement and speech. I became a geologist because I love being on the move, love being outdoors. I got into search and rescue for the adventure and the contribution and uh, the sense of fulfillment. Been volunteering for like six, seven years as a backcountry wilderness steward for the Mountain National Forest and then four and a half years working on the PMLR light rail project. A lot of those activities that are also, besides involving physical movement, uh, involve speech. And, you know, ta engaging with people, talking with people, um, interacting with them. I made it up. You made it. Keep your eye well, on the ball, that's... right, Fred? <laughs> yeah, right, Estelle? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Keep your, eye on, the keep your eye on the ball. There's no way I could physically do it today, I don't think. I am reverting to a child. It all falls unduly now. Thank God she's got the fortitude to stick with this. He, he kind of tells me what he needs to have done, but he's not able to do it himself. So he seems bored a lot. I get windy just walking up our, our driveway. People give me wonderful hugs. Those other things, you know, I like to do. And the guy to come across the bridge name and everything. And I cannot get my hands, you know, above the waistline of their backs anymore. And I have no strength. And that's a huge loss to me. 
It's the same way with the, the dogs, touching, petting. Mm. It's huge biofeedback for them and for me and comforting. I don't have that anymore. This doesn't get better. There's nothing they can do. Just They can say what's happening t to a certain degree. They can't say how you're going to progress through it, but they can say, well, at some point, you know, your arms aren't going to work, and at some point your legs aren't going to work, and then your respiratory system is going to fail, and that's probably what's going to do you in. But there's nothing they can do to stop it. It's just really difficult to feel that your life is winding down. But I feel very, very fortunate that I can uh, open up and share with others what this is like and how extraordinary it is to have discussions with family and close friends about choosing one's end of life. Where's Where's Echo? Where does Echo come from? How about Echo? Or Tia? <laughs> Man, put down by dog. And I do think that our perhaps our willingness to be here with you helps you keep the focus. Surely your strength in in encountering the ordeal the way you have, your generosity and your grace helps me every day. I'm with you to the end and have been and I think everybody else is with you to the end. I mean I want the quality of life and this is quality right now. I'm not really into the quantity 